everyone, Allie Janes here. For my birthday, my best friend in Chicago got me a bottle of sparkly red nail polish because the name of the nail polish is Allie's Big Break. How awesome is that? And my dream finally came true. I get to play an assassin. She can't cook, she can't clean, she enjoys the fun of things in life. This past weekend, I got cast as an assassin. I will be playing an ex-assassin who gets pulled back into assassinating by her evil ex-boss. Good times! I'm looking forward to the butt-kicking and the espionage and the intrigue. Will I get to drink martinis too? Only time will tell. Although, I prefer margaritas. Frozen, not stirred. Last week, I filmed a segment for a hidden camera show. I think my bit will be airing the week before Valentine's Day, but I will let you guys know if I get more details. I have one question left unanswered from my questions with Allie last week. So here it goes. Plastic Star asks, if you could go back in time, when and where would you go? That is an excellent and difficult question. If I could just pick specific moments of fun and not have to stick around for all the doctors with leeches and the dying of consumption and the chamber pots, then this is where I would go. I'd like to spend a few days in Victorian England, maybe get some Yorkshire pudding, sing a few carols. Then I'd love to hang out for a bit in the mid 30s or late 1940s, get dolled up and maybe drive around in a 36 Chevy for a bit. I would love to see the coronation of Hatshepsut. She was the only female pharaoh of Egypt. That girl rocked it. Then I think it would be fun to be on set during the filming of Some Like It Hot, see Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis go crazy. Finally, I think it'd be a blast to go to a 1928-ish Gatsby-like party. That would be totally just for the fun of it. In my last vlog, I talked about what a wuss I am in the cold and how I find anything less than 50 degrees super freezing. As a result, some of you thought that I didn't truly understand the meaning of cold. I realize now that I left out crucial information in my response and I would like to clarify. I grew up in northern New Hampshire. Not southern New Hampshire. Not almost Boston. I grew up in almost Canada, New Hampshire. In the White Mountains. It is freezing up there for nine months straight. There are nine months of snow and ice and it's often been so cold it's too cold for snow. I know cold. I know cold. I know cold. You know how people say you get used to the cold? Not true. I lived there for 18 years and I never got used to it. I had thermal window shades, blankets galore, and a radiator in my room that I kept set to 77 degrees all the time. Never got used to it. Then I moved to Chicago. Still stupidly cold, but only for seven months instead of nine months. Still never got used to it. So now I'm here in LA, a climate that my internal thermometer actually gets. Fun fact, my normal temperature is about a degree and a half lower than 98.6. So much like a reptile, it's a lot harder for me to stay warm. Ugh. Too bad reptiles are so icky or we could totally hang out together. This past weekend, I went to a very cool gallery show of this photographer I know, Kyle Cassidy. He took this really intriguing set of photos on this very basic Leica digital camera made in 1998. His concept for the gallery show was to print the photos as four by sixes and then he opened up the opportunity opportunity to everyone to host the gallery show. It could be in a dorm room, in an alley, anywhere you can think of. He would mail the gallery show host the photos and then the host could hang them in whatever order they wanted, however they wanted. So every show would be a different experience and the photos would always be telling a different story. The photos themselves are really beautiful and intriguing, but the concept of the gallery show is even cooler. The show that I attended was in the Venice Beach area of Los Angeles and it was held in someone's garage. There are shows coming up all over the US and more being planned overseas. So if you're interested in the photos, attending a show, or hosting a show, I'll put some links to Kyle's project below. Kyle also has a fascinating book called Armed America, Portraits of Gun Owners in Their Homes. He photographed gun owners in their homes and asked them one question, why do you own a gun? It's an unbiased and intriguing look into a very controversial subject and I highly recommend it. Time for a movie review. Okay, you all know how I feel about cooking. And as such, I have no real interest in Julia Child, although I'm sure she was a lovely person. However, Julia Julia was on Netflix On Demand, so I figured, 
Why not? Let me first say that Meryl Streep is a genius. I could have watched her as Julia Child all day. In fact, I kind of wish the movie was just about her. She made me feel joyful every moment she was on screen. And her rapport with Stanley Tucci is just adorable. The other storyline, the one with Julie, was cute enough at first, but it quickly became whiny and annoying. Julie came across as childish and narcissistic, and I could have cared less if she succeeded in her goals. So to sum it up, Meryl Streep should adopt me. Question of the week, is there a piece of art that's had a big impact on you? Let's limit this to the visual arts. Could be painting, photo, sculpture, movie, fashion design, architecture, etc. Leave a comment or video response below. Thanks for watching. Later lovelies. As for nicknames that I've given, my pets get the worst of it. Their nicknames are continually evolving. Maxwell used to be called Booger because he has a brown little spot of fur right here. It's silly. Other than that, I can roll my tongue and touch my tongue to my nose. <laughs> and I can do pretty good pinup 1940s hairdos.